recording this and I forgot, so I just started. <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> obviously some people will not be able to book with us because uh, the room's not available. Uh, some people will choose not to book because the price is too high, whether it's menu or the or the uh, food and beverage minimum. Some because they have a 200 top and we can't accommodate because of the room size. This just allows us to track the reason, if we can get it, why people are not booking with us. Um, you can switch this conversion ratio here. If we go and filter by store, you get an idea of what all stores are reporting uh, for conversion ratios. <coughs> Uh, Casey, I, oh, sorry, Nancy, I would say that yours is probably, just gut feeling, the most accurate. 61% um, over lunch and dinner inquiries from having worked in that market, I'd say that's pretty close to true. So, I mean, just based on this, I'd say you're, you're collecting a lot of data, and good job with that. Um, when we go to... Uh, I should say, it's, this is only going to calculate a conversion rate when we're in number of events. And so quick thing uh, to move on. on. I know we talked about it last time about how if they are ten, um, prospective but they, we don't move forward with them, we want to leave them as prospective or are we still closing them or canceling them? That's a good question. And I'm going to touch on this later too. Okay. But here's the short answer. <clears throat> if, they, if they inquire and you never hear back, mm -hmm. then you would leave it as prospective. So if you followed up and they didn't email you back and they never called you back and they never told you, hey, I'm canceling, you would leave it as prospective. It's simply an inquiry that never converted to a booking. Okay. However, if in following up, and I think this is more likely the case, if yeah. you follow up with them and say, hey, just are you guys still interested? And they say, no, we went to a different restaurant, then you would change it from prospective to canceled. Okay. Understood. Does that make sense? And I'll go into more detail on that at the no, end of this meeting. Oh. But the idea is that we would be following up with all of our prospective events until the date of their event. And if they are going to cancel, no hard feelings, but we would be curious to know why if, if they offer that information. If it's a, they, chose a diff, they chose a competitor or if their event got canceled or whatever the case may be. Um, now when we talk about the unknowns. There's an unknown in each category here. And that basically means no data was entered. Um, so let me go back to, I'll, actually I'll stay in number of events and I'll go to all stores. Um, <clears throat> your graphs down here don't include, except for this one I just realized, most of them don't include the unknown categories because I'm only interested in representing the percentages of what we know. Um, I'll clean that up later, but uh, these unknowns, so if I go to lead source, for example, let me let my screen catch up, uh, all of these are reported data, but there were 83 events that we did not enter a lead source. Um, now, to be fair, a lot of that is because we started two months ago, some stores rolled in at a later period, Nancy, I don't think I had you set up for a month, so... <clears throat> a lot of these are higher than they normally are. I kind of went through and looked at everybody's stuff over the past reporting period and everybody's doing a really good job about recording this information. In fact, if I change this to just show period seven, you'll see that when it comes to lead source, there's only two events that weren't entered uh, for period seven. Um, what I'm trying to hit on here is that we want as much data as possible. Um, and so we want you to fill in all of this information and caterees um, when you're able to. Uh, there is options on almost every drop down that says other. So if for some reason the categories that we have aren't working, go ahead and click other. At least we know it's reported. Um, there will be occasions where it's left unknown. And that's understandable, but we're looking for a very small percent of our events to be left unknown. Uh, let's see. Did that answer your question, Curtis? Did I explain that well? Yes. No, that's perfect. Okay. Any when other it, questions on this before we jump it, over? When it comes to the unknown, like, for example, under um, the business type, if it's a social event and there is no business type, would you...
and then two, that as we begin to see that some some uh, tags or categories need to be modified to better suit, we, we kind of have a big bucket now. Maybe we're missing some buckets, and we want to make sure that if you begin to see some trends occur in any one category that deserve their own representation, then in your regular calls, that that becomes something that you guys discuss so that we yeah. can evaluate whether or not we need to capture that data going forward, or maybe it's not relevant to capture. Agreed. And I will say thank you to Nancy who got me some feedback on adding some of those categories. I was a little late on doing it, Nancy, but you should have noticed we added in the banking and energy categories I saw it. at your request, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, any anytime in a, a Pete over in Jacksonville, man, any any stuff that you think that you want to be able to track through this, um, let me know, and we'll figure out a way to work it in so that we can do so. All right, that'd be great. Anything else at this moment on this one, guys? I just was um, wondering, so you always have to pick a category. You can't just input something in there instead, like if it's a so wedding. So you can. Yeah, you can. So I have designed, let me go over into Caterese real quick and show you. So here's the deal. The, we're going to look at quick picks real quick. What would be best is if, like let's say, uh, menu for something. So this is a list right here of all of the quick picks that I've created. The reason I've created quick picks is because it keeps everything spelled the same way across every store, which means when we're rolling up data in the spreadsheet, the formulas in the spreadsheet will actually work. Um, if you were to type your own, the spreadsheet's not that intuitive. It just It's not going to report your data. So what I recommend doing is if you have the need to type something in one of the categories, um, go ahead and do it. Uh, shoot me a quick email and let me know what you had to add on, and we'll just add that category permanently to your list. That way, you'll never have to type it again. It'll be an option for you to select from. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Yeah, so especially if you if you run into one twice, then it's good enough reason for now to at least add it to the list. So just keep me posted and I can go in and set, if I'm adding it to Jacksonville, then I'm going to add it to ours too, just so that we all have the same options. All right, close out of here. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to move on to our email campaign. This is something that we're working on right now. Uh, for December, <clears throat> and I know I discussed this with Jack, uh, with Catherine, Pete, and when she was there, but I'm not sure if she relayed the message. We're looking at um, starting an email campaign. It's here. This is a rough draft. It's highlighted in yellow, but basically this is an opportunity to send a mass email to our contacts um, to begin the process of booking out our uh, rooms in December early. Uh, and I'm going to do a run through real quick just to show you guys this process and how it works. First thing I do is go to queries and I'm going to query events. I'm in our system right now. <clears throat> okay. If you haven't run a query before, this will be a little demo. So we're going to add a new condition and we're going to select the event dates that are between December. So right now I'm selecting all the events that we did last year. And you guys should have um, the data from this already backloaded into your system, just like we did. So I'm going to run this query. Now, Nancy, um, since you have multiple years 
-hmm. you can actually run this inquiry for not only 2015, but mm -hmm. also 2014 and 2013 uh, to pull all years back data. <clears throat> Over here, you can figure out which fields you want to go in and play around with this. I'm, the reason I'm kind of going through this is uh, to show you how it's done because there's a number of uses for this um, and hey, you Brian, may find some others. Yes, sir. Did you did you um, select your range to be for a little over a year, 13 months? I sure did. Thanks. <laughs> One second, I'll change that. There we go. All right. Spread these guys out. Okay. Maximize this. All right. So here's our query. This shows all of our. Oh, I did it again, didn't I? Let's that again. Okay. Here we go. This is all of our December events in Austin from last year. Um, the what you do at this point is you can filter um, by the date and organize them by the date. Uh, what we will be doing is organizing them by the net spend and the guest count here and do a targeted email so that we're going to roll it out in stages. We're going to focus on our key clients first, make sure we're maximizing the uh, number of guests in each room and the dollar spend in each room. So we're going to send an email to all of our top spenders last year that says, hey, did you want to book with us again this year? And we'll give them a week, and then we'll go to the second tier, and then we'll go to the third tier. Um, <clears throat> and let me just show you. I think I put some in for us here. Go by date. I should have everyone loaded. So here we go. These are events, test events that I put in for just us. Get everybody here um, to test the email system. But basically, you go through, just select the guys that you want to email: your top tier, your mid tier, your bottom tier, or all of them in some situations. Uh, click your email tab. We are going to use a merge document and we're going to wait and finalize this merge document so you guys don't need to worry about sending any of this out on your own right now I'm just giving you an idea of the process and this is what the format kind of tentatively looks like and you click send oh wait no I'll put a subject in test holiday email Send. All right. Change that. One second, guys. Do that one more time. So I think put the right email in. Booking contact. That's who we're sending to. and merge document. Okay. One thing I want you guys to note on that is that uh, I just sent the email to all of you, so you'll see it come up on your end. Um, and in theory, what we can do is that process to email up to however many events we want all at one time. Um, now, right now, Sean's email is going off because <clears throat> I carbon copy ourselves on all of the emails that we send out, and your system is probably set up by default to do so as well, which is a good way to track your um, uh, conversations and outlook moving forward. But it sends that email from your inbox, and it's personalized. It'll read the first name of the person, uh, etc. If I go into, well, I close my email. But that should give you an idea of the process. Uh, 
does everybody kind of understand the objective that we're trying to achieve with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One thing that I want to, you guys to begin to think about is the fact that while we're focusing on this holiday email campaign as the first one that we do, um, there's a number of uses for this. Um, it doesn't have to be something on this grand scale. You can create your own email that's simply a follow-up email that's a thank you email and go through and run a query for all of the events from the past week and every Friday send out a thank you letter to them saying, hey, thanks again. Let me know if I can be of service in the future. Tell me about your event, however you want it to read. Um, you can also set up a, a generic email that would, you could email to your prospective clients, um, those that you're waiting on a contract to be returned or you haven't heard back. Uh, and it could say, hey, Bob, hadn't heard back from you in a while. Are you still interested in your event? So they can be formatted however you want. I just want you guys to understand the process so that you can start thinking about ways that that could improve your time, um, clear up some of the redundant systems that you're running, and just um, make things a little more efficient on your end, and hopefully build contacts. Let's see. Here. So Brian, a real practical example of what you might do is if you attended an off-site event, like some taste of event, you captured a lot of business cards from all those folks that you met at that particular event, then you could, in theory, send out a letter. If you entered them all as contacts, you could send out a letter to all those folks at once, an email to those yeah, folks? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think one that is <clears throat> excuse me, very practical, practical to every store on a daily basis or monthly basis is our wine event contacts. So, you know, we have been putting all of our uh, sommelier for a day contacts every month into uh, Fishbowl and logging them in on our website, but we've also been logging them in in caterees so that when it's time for us to have a wine dinner, we go to an account that's wine contacts and we can directly email all of them and we can have that email read hey John uh, met you previously at one of our wine events I wanted to reach out to you personally and let you know we're having a special dinner on this date if you want me to hold a couple seats for you let me know um, and while we haven't put that into effect yet our database is growing pretty quickly on our end and um, we expect that to be a huge tool uh, moving forward in 2017 for our specialty dinners. Let's see. We do. Hey, Pete, and, uh, Pete and Oz, I would just say that as a as a as a general rule, the things that we talk about as possible capabilities within this software, just like that example, they just need to be put into practice. So it's not this is what you could do. This is what we. I think Brian's being kind. We, it's a, something we should do. And if there's something that you guys come across as additional ways to utilize the software, then uh, then I, I would certainly want to be looped into what, you, what you're doing it for. So in your weekly recaps, this would be a great way for you guys to share with me, hey, this is, this is how we're utilizing the software in ways that are improving our ability to promote the restaurant in various forms and fashions. Awesome. I do want to show you guys, um, particularly my banquet managers, um, let me go to email campaigns. We've had this one on there for a while. I've loaded in on everybody the December holiday 2016. One thing that's very important is we want to be able to, to track the success of this program. Um, so what will happen, and I know this from running it previously in Houston, is we will send this email out. It'll, you know, 100 people will get it, and you'll start having replies to your emails. Um, when that reply comes through, whether it's by an email or by phone or however the inquiry comes in, if you know that it's related to the fact that we sent that email blast out, then code them as a December holiday 2016. This will allow us to track the success of our email campaign. In the future, we may find that we need to run different versions of the email in different markets, 
uh, we may test different versions and we want to know which ones are the most successful about um, you know calling our past guests to action to book a new party for this year. Um, in addition, this is networking events. I've put our first in. I've had this in here for a while. We did a happy hour for Silicon Labs. Um, I just added it to our quick picks. I know that today we actually booked an event for Silicon Labs because of this happy hour. So we would code that event from this. This is a good way for us to track our networking, the things that we're doing outside of the restaurant. It doesn't have to be stuff that's specific to the event manager, um, although probably most of the things that go in here will. But so again, if you go off-site to do networking, or if you're hosting um, you know, a happy hour for some admins, uh, whatever it is that you're doing to build sales, I would suggest you load that into your quick picks list um, so that when you book something because of that, you know. So that in the future, when you say, hey, why did we comp $200 worth of hors d'oeuvres on this date? We can go in and look and say, well, that $200 of hors d'oeuvres got us an event that spent 2000 or not, <laughs> and then not do it again. You know, so we know and can relate directly the cells that come from these events and begin to target the ones that are the most fruitful. So is that something that we'd have to tell you about also so you can... No, um, what I would encourage you to do is to just go ahead and add it into your quick picks. Huh. If you haven't done that, let me get out of here and I'll show you real quick just to review. Um, if you have to just type it in, type it in. The only thing that I need to do is add it into our tracking spreadsheet. So yeah, a quick email would work, but don't feel like you need to wait on me to make these changes. If you go to administration, to lists, to quick picks, um, and you just find the one that you're changing. So this was networking events. You can add a line. So Nancy's birthday party. And now you know um, that'll be, you just save it and you're good to go. And it'll be on your drop down screen. Does that make sense? No, yeah, I, I've done that already. I was just making sure it, like, because you have to put it in your spreadsheet, so make sure to send yeah. you an email when we add things like that, right? Yeah, do send me an email. The good news is, is my spreadsheet is easily added on. I've got it worked out. So all I have to do is literally come in, type whatever it is that you put in, uh -huh. uh, and it'll auto-populate. I don't have to do anything other than that. So it's real easy. Just shoot me a quick email and um, make sure it's shared on our conference calls. You may shoot an email and just CC all the stores so that everybody can add it into their own. Yeah. Hey, the so only one, time we're going to run into problems is if we spell them differently. Yeah. Spell so things one thing differently that I is, should track is, is definitely that email blast that was sent by home office, the $100 gift card and stuff, because I've already had maybe three or four. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, we should totally put that in. Absolutely. Um, I'll think of a name for it. <laughs> we'll, make a quick, we'll make a quick, easy name, $100 kickback. And so we know what we're getting from that. That's a great idea. Thank you, Nancy. Um, let's see. One other thing I want to go over with you guys, just some daily practice stuff, best practices. And we'll try to wrap this up real quick. One, you should be using your BEOs. Um, Nancy, I know that you probably, you're still using all the Caterese BEOs for all the events? Yes. Okay. Pete, how are y'all doing over there with the BEOs and, and um, Cateries? We switched over to Cateries BEOs. You have? That's awesome. Are they working out well for you? Yes. Okay. Good. Then we're hopefully we're getting to a point where once you can rely on the Cateries BEOs, you can stop typing your own and save the time that it takes to do that. And hopefully that frees up some time on your end to do other things. Um, I'm going to show you guys a quick reporting tool that I think would benefit us all to incorporate. Uh, if I go to Tools and just click Current Events. Um, total current events would be everything from this point moving forward. Exclude status. I'm going to exclude the canceled events and closed events. So only the events that we are hoping or know will come and that haven't happened yet and run this report. Okay. So this is probably 
the most important report, as simple as it is, um, that is used as a communication tool from the event manager to the general manager. What you see on this report is the status of everything that's upcoming. So for example, um, I can filter by date, and on Friday, before Sean leaves for the weekend, I can go through each of these with her. So Sean, have you followed up on this event for the 18th? I see that it's still perspective. What are they waiting on? Uh, this one's confirmed. It's definite. And then we have two perspectives for Saturday. Uh, what we need to do is get into the habit of when we have downtime or when you schedule it yourself, I know that for me it was always on Fridays was a good day, to close out the week, I would call all of the prospective and tentative events for the upcoming month and say, hey, um, just so you know, I'm still waiting on your contract. Let me know if I can do anything for you to help you get that back to me. Or have you guys made a decision where we stand on your event? And just begin the process of closing on all of these leads and moving them from perspective to definite. Um, get ahead of the game and not wait till the last minute till the contract comes in. It allows you more time to finalize the details of the event and know which rooms you have available. It becomes very critical as we move towards December and things get really busy. Um, but what would be a nice procedure is if as an event manager you were able to print this out uh, on Fridays and leave it with your general manager. Your general manager knows exactly what's coming up, what's been booked, um, how many inquiries are still out there. If you want, you can run this report with the cancellations in there too, so your GM knows how many said they were going to book but said no. If I, as a general manager, I was looking at this report as ours stands right now, I would want to know why we have so many events that are perspective but only a couple that are definite. What's the holdup? Do you need help? Do you need somebody to come in and help do some calls for you to follow up with these people? That type of information. And we would want to see these statuses move forward. Does that make sense to everybody? Did you have any questions on it? No, no. all good. good. Okay. All right. Well, I think that that's about the 45 minutes. I nailed it. <laughs> so did you guys, any other questions or randoms that you're thinking of or want to bring up? Yeah, so, okay, so I know how to do the, um, the uh, bulk messages through what you just did um, from the query. Uh -huh. I went and tried to do it a different way from the home screen where it says email. Um, you're supposed to be able to click on different um, companies, and when I did that, if you click on multiple companies, it says something about, like, um, uh, client, and it doesn't show, like, all of the emails. And there's no way for me to send emails that way. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I explain that right. Like yeah, you... hang on one second. Let me, what I'm going to do is screen, start sharing. Okay. Okay, you should have control of my keyboard and mouse real quick. See if you can move it. Yeah. Okay, show me what you're talking about. Okay, so if I go to, um, let's say, account manager. Okay. Ah, uh, I see what you and you're you're clicking on the clients. Yeah, so if I click like on that one, and then I want to do these two companies right here. Uh huh. Um, and then I go to email because this is the way that the instruction thing um, was telling you to do it. Yeah. Um, and so see, it says okay. client email. Yeah. When you click on it, uh, there's nothing there. And so I tried sending a test email. I created two accounts with one of my personal emails and then the the restaurant's email. Uh -huh. see it would send, and it didn't send anything. Okay. However, so, if yeah. you get out of that one, and you do like one at a time, uh -huh. and you click email, it'll go to the first person that you had highlighted over here on underneath it. Right. But you can also change it from this little uh, phone book and add every single person on there to right. it. Right. Let me show you. A quick thing to note. Okay. Cancel out of here. And cancel out of here real quick. Okay. When you go to email, let's see. Okay. Oh, do it. 
So there's a difference between client email and booking contact email. So anytime you have an email in the system that's up here, mm -hmm. that's your client email. And oh, rarely, I... rarely will we use client email because that's a generic email for the whole company. That's we what want it's showing. Right. So you, like if, the better way would be to um, go in right here huh. and just, I'm going to highlight several. Um. I think it lets me, oh, no, that does it. So I wouldn't be able to do it for different companies at the same time. I'd have to go company by company to do something like that, right? Yes, unless you did a query. What's the purpose of the email? What's that? What, what would be the purpose of the email? I was just playing around with it to see how it would, you know, like if I did an yeah. admin, I would pick several companies and, uh, you know, focus on, like, you know, Deloitte, like, hey, I want to invite your admins in for happy hour. Um, like so you have a number. I, I think a more efficient way to do it is to use queries. Your yeah. way works, which you, your, your, the way that you saw where you go in and click them all with the address book. Uh -huh. yeah. But you'd have to do company by company. Another way would be to query all of your accounts. So you can do an event query or an account query. If you account okay. query... You would go in and client organization equals, and here's all your clients. So I want to see all of my Accenture clients uh, okay. run the inquiry, and then you can bring in all of your booking contacts, et cetera, and highlight them all that way. Does that, that make makes sense? sense? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. Yeah, if you, if you come up with a program that you're going to run, and you're mm -hmm. doing some emails out of here that's not just to a specific person, let me know okay. um, because I'm interested in tracking it and knowing how successful it was. If, you, if Nancy, you find a program <clears throat> that requires you to do an email blast in any form or fashion and it generates any sales, then it's one mm -hmm. that we may want to duplicate at all stores. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions, guys? Mm -mm. Okay, well, that's all I've got. Curtis, do you have anything to add? No, great job on the presentation, and I just would reiterate how important it is for us to continue these types of calls and to make sure that everybody's on board with what we're doing. So if there's questions, then I hope everyone's asking and that people begin to see the value of tracking this information, something that we've really not had access to. The next phase, obviously, to this would be, okay, now we've got a lot of data uh, so Pete, Oz, and, and everybody, are, are we having discussions inside our restaurants uh, and then with me and Nick to determine, hey, are these, are, are, is what we're doing working? And how could we tweak these things to put better tools in the hands of all of our banquet people? So if we find that stuff's not working, then we should not do that stuff anymore. We should look for things that are working and then do a lot more of that. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Brian, for uh, being the project manager on this. Uh, great Pleasure. job. And then as we add, um, currently, Cool River Las Colinas and Three Forks in Dallas uh, are getting their catering systems are being set up as we speak. And they will be added to these calls uh, in the very near future uh, as we ramp those up. And then, as a side note, Kelly uh, Kearney, formerly McGlynn, uh, in Jacksonville, she is in, she'll be spending time with both of the teams in Dallas tomorrow, and uh, then hopefully we'll be able to join the next call. So Maritza, you'll be certainly getting her up to speed on all this stuff uh, as, she, as she lands. So thank you guys all. Awesome. Thank you all. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.